in a world where Microsoft virtualization is still considered to be the underdog by some. The Hyper-V Amigos enlighten the IT crowds on how they could very well be mistaken. Oh, welcome. This time I have Hans Vredewort on my podcast. And Hans, uh, I, I would say everything with me and the MVP program started a little bit, uh, I think, six years ago with Hans. I, I was at as Hans' home in the Netherlands and I did my first video interview with you. You were a or you are a, a, a big um, inspiration to to me because you was you you are and you were very well known uh, for Hyper V and you you were a cluster MVP in these in these former days, right? Hans, yes, I, I, yeah. Go on, please. Yes, I, I, I was looking at the uh, the different uh, MVP awards. We are you you rem remember these? Yeah. You get one every year. <laughs> I, know. I have I have four different uh, descriptions like cluster, virtual machine, Hyper V, Hyper -V. And now cloud and data center m manager. Who knows where it ends? <laughs> yes, we now all <laughs> in the same group uh, yeah. in the cloud and data center management with a lot of other MVP. I would say specialities like we were Hyper V MVPs, and I love that. I I love to be a Hyper V MVP, and I was. A little bit disappointed when they uh, did these big groups. We are now with clustering, that's okay. We are now with storage, PowerShell, Azure Stack, and we will talk about Azure Stack soon. And I think there are Hyper-V on Linux, and there are uh, System Center, of course. Uh, don't forget System yeah, Center. We're, we're all one big family. Uh, one yeah. big family yeah. now. So uh, okay, but I I loved to be uh, an Hyper-V MVP. It it, it 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 was something special, and I know you like high. high Hyper-V a lot, but nowadays you focus a little bit more on the new stuff like Azure Stack, right, Hans? Yeah, yes, that's true. Um, of course, Hyper-V has always been one of my first loves. Uh, as, <laughs> as clustering, uh, right? <laughs> yeah, but Hyper-V, it started all with Hyper-V and I became cluster MVP out of nothing, you know. The, yeah. uh, I think there was a vacancy there at the time. Yeah. But um, uh, for the last eight or maybe nine years, I've been doing everything with Hyper-V. Yeah. And hence my blog, hyperv.new. But it focuses on uh, different topics now. Uh, as you know, the last couple of years, we we did a lot of Azure pack uh, blogs on our, on our, on our blog. Uh, and that, what the, the feeling I have is that uh, the hypervisor, the storage, and the networking beneath it are just the things we need to uh, to do the rest, to, think, uh, to do the applications yeah. right. Yeah, of I, course. Of course, we we like to go under the hood all the time and see how things work. And uh, but well, it's more difficult to get everything working in 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 harmony. Yeah. So and that's before, why they put us all in the same group. <laughs> yeah. But before we start going into our our um, topic, uh, I want I want you to introduce yourself a little bit because we are I, I say we we are the the old guys. Uh, we are both over 50, and Hans, you are doing IT for quite a time. But I know you didn't start with IT right away. You studied English literature, right? Did I remember that's, right? Uh, that's correct. Uh, well, I've, I st I, I, um, my first uh, dream was to become an English teacher. Yeah. So I started doing uh, the uh, the high school for for getting uh, my degree for English. Yeah. My second degree was for geography, by the way. Um, and after a couple of years, I decided to get a degree uh, in university, and there I studied 18th century English literature. I wrote my thesis on that. <laughs> But one day I had to uh, I had to get a job, and there weren't, weren't any jobs uh, available. So I decided to go into uh, IT. Yeah. At the time in the 80s, it was very easy to get into IT without any any knowledge. Uh, you had to get the knowledge while at the job. So I promoted myself as a senior sales guy. You know, <laughs> nice, nice, nice talk, and trying to convince people to buy servers. And well, there weren't any servers. There were two. I sold computers. Yeah. PCs from uh, IBM, uh, Apple, uh, Wang, you name it. And then came Compaq, uh, 
the small guy which took over her digital and all the other companies became HP. And uh, well, long story short, I've been in IT, I think over 30 years now. Yeah. It was and fr the problem I had was that when I when I started selling PCs, customers wanted to do something with it. <laughs> so they said, "Can't you program something for me?" Uh, I said, "Well, why not? I can try." Yeah. So that's how I got into programming. So I've been a developer in the early days, like you. Uh, yeah. You've been a developer, and then uh, then we got to focus more on networking. Uh, so I had all kinds of early networking experience, local area networks, IBM PC network, uh, MS network, token ring and everything. So that's a lot of history there. But the last, let's say, last 10 years, I've been focusing on Microsoft technolo technology. The hypervisor has always been my favorite. Uh, Clustering, high availability, those were the topics I've always uh, worked with. Yeah. And all these topics are very handy to know for the things we do today. Uh, so under the hood, I'm quite proficient, but now I'm getting a little bit higher up the stack, trying to uh, really help the service providers uh, get the, the, the best proposal for their uh, infrastructure. Yeah. So uh, I think we have seen, I, I al also started in the late 80s uh, as an IT professional and I was developer, as you said, and now I'm an IT pro and coming back to development uh, because we have PowerShell now, uh, we have other things like uh, PowerShell DSC and uh, ARM. We will talk a little bit about uh, uh, ARM templates maybe. Um, so a little bit of this DevOps model is, is now helpful, right? Uh, so we have a good background as a developer and know stuff from then. Yeah, we can combine it a little bit. Yeah. Uh, it would be a little bit too much to call myself a DevOps. I'm trying to think like that. <laughs> yeah. uh, but You're always easy. very modest, right? <laughs> it's, it's not. It's, it's simply not easy. <laughs> it isn't. Uh, luckily, I have a lot of very clever colleagues like uh, Ben Gelens and uh, Mark Skolman and Daryl van der Peil. We, we have a great team of... Uh, most of them are MVPs. As you know, Mark van Eyck was with us. He, yeah, he moved. He, he just moved to uh, to, to Microsoft. Microsoft. Yeah, he's now in the CAT team, right? In the yeah. customer yeah. something team. Yeah, yeah. And, and he's he's very much involved with Azure Azure Stack and yeah. the ARM templates and. Yeah. So this was a little bit history, but now let's let's talk about let's dive in. Uh, uh, you you mentioned Azure Pack. This I, you yeah. you were doing a lot of work with Windows Azure Pack, uh, also at okay. service providers, and uh, then uh, maybe you can elaborate a little bit about what Azure Pack is. It's still a product that is available from Microsoft, but it it's a little bit in the background because we have now this new big star Azure Stack, and we will. Uh, talk about Azure Stack very soon. But uh, first, Hans, yeah. uh, Azure Pack, what, what is Azure Pack? Well, I don't want to talk too much about Azure Pack. No, only as, I, as intro to I, Azure Stack. I, I can understand that. Uh, yes, Azure Pack was um, a product uh, which uh, offered Azure-like services. I say Azure-like. Yeah. They try to, to use as much of the technology of Azure as possible to provide uh, a self-service model for uh, service providers and cu their customers, their tenants. It was based on Server 2012 R2, on System Center 2012 R2, mm -hmm. and a number of uh, uh, services like uh, infrastructure as a service, uh, database as a service, platform as a service, well, limited, websites, web apps. Yeah. Uh, SQL, uh, MySQL as a service. So there were a number of services being offered uh, on the Hyper-V uh, Hyper platform and a nice portal which mimics or was almost the same as the uh, the, the older, uh, the previous Azure portal. I, it, uh, Azure. Was, it was called Catal, right? Was Catal it the the was the code name. Yeah. And even in, even in Azure Stack, you still see see some of that yeah. code name back, yeah. especially in the in the portal side. Yeah, but then but, Microsoft announced at Ignite last year in in May 2015 uh, a thing called Azure Stack, and uh, you are all in Azure Stack. So so Hans, maybe uh, the the 10,000 foot view. What is Azure Stack, or what is what is better in Azure Stack than in in Azure Pack? For our well, for our viewers or uh, uh, listeners, 
Well, the the, <clears throat> the main idea is to bring Azure, yeah. public Azure, into your own data center, and with an exact copy, not all, not of all the software because it has to be a little bit adapted to the the the, the sizing of your smaller data centers, but. Uh, uh, a, select, a selective number of services will be available in your own data center and it will be exactly the same. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the theme of consistency has been very important uh, and that, that also sets off Azure Pack, which is quite different in, in a number of ways. Maybe Azure Pack is the old portal, uh, the, the service management API portal. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the new portal of the new API is called uh, uh, Azure Resource Manager. And that's the, the new Azure portal as we know it today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so you said something that is very important. It's uh, Microsoft brings Azure to the data center of the customer. If the, yep. uh, if the customer is a service provider or um, an enterprise customer, they get the same Azure experience. They have the same APIs. You have the same portal, the Beats yes. portal, and you have the same model like, uh, like the Azure Resource Manager that is in Azure doing all the heavy lifting and you get the same in the private cloud or the hosted cloud, right? Correct, correct. ARM, as we abbreviate it, Azure Resource Manager, is the is the main thing about Azure Stack and Azure. And if you create or build or use or reuse a template using uh, uh, JSON code, yeah, in, in, uh, we we define a, a service or a solution in JSON code. That's called an ARM template, mm -hmm. and we can. It doesn't really matter if you deploy that to Azure, public Azure, or to your local Azure. Yeah, that's your local your local data center. The only the only thing that is different is the location specifier. Yeah. So that, of course you cannot deploy any services which are not in your own own data center, like machine learning. That's typically something you have to do in public Azure. Yeah. But uh, things like virtual machines, uh, SQL databases, uh, web apps. Those are the things you can deploy in your own data center. Yeah. So I I understand I understood Azure Stack really <coughs> when I was in Redmond uh, at the beginning of October, and uh, I I always hear Azure Stack is Azure, and that's that's really true. That's the essence of everything. So you you have to understand that you can only do in Azure Stack that are possible in Azure because you get the same code, right? Exactly, uh, yeah. so we cannot do, we, we always follow uh, public Azure. Yeah. Uh, this is, uh, you can see that uh, for instance in the in the choices that have been made uh, in, in Service 2012 R2 and later we had, for instance, generation two virtual machines. Yeah. We had the VHDX files and multiple other things like uh, Online growth of virtual uh, virtual hard disks. Those techniques, those te techniques are not available in Azure, so they're not available in Azure Stack yeah. either. Yeah, that's important. So, right? we so we first have to update the Azure before we can uh, yeah. get those services in Azure Stack. Yeah. And this is one also one important thing. Azure is is developed fast, so there are a lot of changes in Azure. You you get uh, you get new possibilities every week, and uh, so this also is important. You you will be updating your local Azure stack also often, so maybe two three times in a year, and that's important because you want the same code in azure or an azure stack that is that is running in azure be, uh, and when you are, when you develop a template with the features of arm and so on and you know, ARM, the api version for yeah, instance has a new version available and uh, another great thing is the marketplace so there are resources that you can use in azure and with azure stack you can uh, they are planning that you can have your own marketplace and also have uh, some of those resources. And if these yeah. resources would be would be uh, depending on APIs that are only in Azure and not in Azure Stack, you would have a problem. You can't use them. So it's yeah. quite important that uh, a customer get gets his mind around this. This model is a con continuous update model, so that you have the same code than in Azure, right? 
Correct. Well, as you as you may know, in Azure Pack we had a quarterly updates. Yeah. Like uh, update rollups. Uh, update rollups. So we had ten, eleven. Four, we are now at eleven. Yeah. Yeah, we had about four a year, so that over, uh, over a couple of years we had about 11. Mm -hmm. um, in Azure Stack, of course, we need to update because if you're behind, you cannot uh, call yourself uh, uh, Azure anymore. Yeah. Microsoft uh, actually demands that you update uh, and don't stay behind too far. Maybe one or two uh, versions behind is okay, but uh, if you're uh, further behind, and I can I still see that uh, with some service providers, they they are really a little bit afraid to update uh, yeah. because it might bring down your complete, complete system. Uh, in this Azure Stack era, we we have limited the, the number of, uh, of we, I must say Microsoft, of course, uh, they limited the, the number of hardware choices. Yeah. Uh, there are only three three choices. In the HP, moment, yeah. HPE, Dell, and oh, Dell. Uh, Lenovo It's the third one. Lenovo. And Lenovo, right? yeah. yeah. And this is quite important because they will not only update the the Azure code and the underlying Windows services, uh, they will also update the firmware of, of, yeah. of the computers, uh, the, 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 maybe the disk firmware, the, yeah. um, everything in the system. So they are in the moment there are three vendors that will the, that will provide integrated systems, uh, and these integrated systems are at least four for servers, for nodes, but the switches are also included in this model because yeah. if, if you want to do something like, or you have to do something like software-defined networking in, in, in Azure Stack for your tenants, because Azure is doing the same, right? Yeah. And then they rely on some features in the switches. The switches have to have, to have BGP, for example. So think, uh, uh, as I understand, an integrated system is servers, software switches so compute yeah. networking and storage right yeah it's a, the, the rack uh, comes with two top of rack switches and yeah. uh, the configuration of that switch is also made done through the uh, deployment uh, procedure uh, of course when you uh, right, let's, let's continue with we have four four or more servers yeah and uh, they have to be connected in a certain way the switches as you said need yeah. to uh, support uh, DCB, uh, priority flow control, and uh, ETS. So those are the three things which are required. But you don't you, you have you don't have to think about it. It it comes as a full package. Exactly. Uh, the installation is done completely automatic. Uh, automatically, uh, I'll show you a little bit of it uh, when I switch to uh, when we switch to the screen. Yeah. Um, and all well the 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 main main issue issue will be how to connect it to your own infrastructure uh, so the uh, your own core switches and the outside world preparing the vlans and preparing the 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 public ips ip space and things that those are the things the customer will have to uh, think about and plan yeah. with the, the yeah. ones uh, yeah. helping and they, to they can uh, get help uh, at, at the company you are working in the netherlands at innovative where you have yes, a lot I, of I, I, um, yeah I didn't say that. I work for I, innovative. Yeah, I say it because uh, it's important if a customer uh, hears this or, or watches this, we will show also a little bit of demo and I will explain what you are showing or you will explain it because this is also a podcast and people hear the stuff in the car so they don't see what don't we will show. Okay. Um, but, we, but, but I will release a video and of course an audio podcast. So we okay. have to explain a little bit what you are doing on the screen for for the the, the uh, people who are only hearing this stuff. But um, you will help, uh, your company will help uh, with the Azure Stack implementation to integrate it in the, the outside world, outside of the integrated system, and also, of course, uh, building ARM templates and so on. And uh, I try to do the same. Uh, so we will see that, how that works. Uh, but for me, it is important that the people realize Azure Stack, and I, I like that. If I realize it, I, I like it. Azure Stack is Azure. So you get a lot of 
cool stuff that is working in Azure, not all of it. You mentioned, for example, machine learning. In, in Azure, a uh, machine learning cluster is quite large, I assume, and uh, you can't do that on four mm. to eight nodes, uh, which no, is the starting point. It's for the, for the scale you yeah. are used to. Yeah. yeah. So uh, not every service will be coming, will be coming down to Azure Stack, uh, at least not at first, and there are services that, that make no sense at all, but a lot of good stuff is possible in Azure Stack. So um, maybe uh, maybe we uh, switch over to the demo and uh, keep in mind we, we have to explain what we are doing and I will of course tell the the the, the listener also to view uh, our our uh, podcast right okay can you see my screen I can see your screen and I'm already recording so I see uh, uh, the hardware is quite beefy right you show the yeah, this is a, this is an HPE uh, DL 360 uh, uh, the the actual uh, Azure Stack four node will be 380, yeah. but I, ha I have a couple of servers which uh, are ha which have enough memory and, and storage to do this. Um, so this is a single box because the the proof of concept, as you know it, is uh, is is based on one node. Yeah. At production, uh, the GA version will be multi-node, and hopefully we'll be able to see something of that in the future. Uh, but this is uh, something you can download uh, from Microsoft. Uh, only yesterday there was a new build, a new TP2 version, an update, uh, version, yeah. I think it's for 11.04.1. Uh, uh, I implemented two servers yesterday and uh, uh, we were also lucky to see that there was uh, an, uh, were extra services uh, like uh, the SQL or the app services, uh, the my SQL and MySQL. But before I, I show those, I, I'd like to tell a little bit about the deployment itself. Yeah, but uh, so, first, uh, I have to interrupt you, sorry. But first, uh, if someone wants to do the single machine deployment and play with Azure Stack, it's publicly available, the TP2. Yes. Um, there are some requirements for the host. They are not too big, but there are some requirements. So uh, could you explain it, uh, what you need at least uh, for hardware to... to... Uh, the exact details, uh, I can, we can point to a, a website where yeah. all the exact details are. But let's say um, one, 128 gigabytes of memory is a minimum. Yeah. Um, I think we need at least 12 cores. 12, 12 cores would be fine, cores. yeah. Uh, we need um, uh, five disks, I, I assume. Yeah, a passive controller which which does not uh, do any RAID. Yeah, an HPA. Uh, an, only HP, an, an HPA and a couple of disks, and, uh, and that's it. one disk one disk for the operating system, yeah. and and of course, uh, it, in this phase, it doesn't really matter uh, what kind of how, how many disks there are. More is better, of course, but yeah. uh, if you have uh, five six disks, that, yeah. that's fine. I, I think the requirement is one for the operating system and four additional 200 gig uh, yeah, disks. Yeah. Uh, Correct. That yeah. should be okay. The, the the most thing that is maybe uh, or the, the most the, the problem is mostly the HPA. A lot of servers have, uh, of course, RAID controllers, and uh, it were uh, they are building in this one uh, one node deployment. They're building up a storage spaces direct cluster with with one. One host. I, I was even. I didn't even think that was possible. But for that, they need the HPA. Yeah. So this yeah, is correct. the setup. Yeah. But now you want to talk about the um, how you deploy it, right? Yeah. Um, when you download uh, the, the the software, you have to uh, unpackage it, you unzip it, and um, you copy it to to a, a directory, and from there you uh, you boot. You, you have to make it uh, boot into the VHDX. Yeah. So, so the, with the later, latest version, you always get the, the final version of Windows Server 2016. So that's good because all the former uh, updates, TP1 and TP2, they had the uh, preview of Windows Server. Yeah. But uh, right now, I'm booted into the VHDX uh, provided by Microsoft. And if you look at the uh, Server Manager, you can see that there are a couple of uh, roles to, uh, installed like Hyper-V, uh, you also see something like a uh, ADS. It's not as if the domain controller is installed on that on that box, but uh, the... The management uh, interface is there, right? 
the management interfaces they are correct. Yeah, we have a so DHCP the, uh, file, uh, IIS, and the Windows uh, update uh, server yeah. is installed. Yeah. But the main things are that Hyper-V is installed. Uh, yeah. So here are a couple of VMs which are already deployed. And of course, we have the, the failover cluster manager. And that shows you something of the configuration. Yeah. Like this is my uh, server with uh, a number of HDDs and SDDs. Um, so I see four disks and two SSDs, and you now show us, uh, um, yeah, the enclosure, right? There are two SSDs that, that speed up your deployment, and you have uh, four yeah. capacity devices for your Cor data. Correct. Cool. Uh, I like this is, machine. It's a good machine. Yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> Uh, from this disk, uh, a pool is created. Uh, as you can see, the space available is uh, about half a terabyte. It's not all that big. Yeah. Our, yeah um, capacity is four terabytes. And, and from that uh, pool, we have created a number of virtual disks. In this case, only one. Um, as you can see, there is a cluster virtual disk called yeah. SU Volume 1. And, and, it, and it's used at a data store and also for the yeah. blob storage uh, that it used. So they did something in Azure Stack that what what I thought is not really possible. They integrated a scale out file server with nested you know, with virtualization, and you should you shouldn't do that in production today uh, because today in a scale out file so in a storage basis direct deployment you sh you you have to decide if you use it as file server or as as uh, um, Hyper-V system, but they had they had some problems to solve. With one box, you have to put everything together, right? Yeah, that's what you, uh, the problem we had in 2012 R2 was that loopback was not supported. Exactly. And uh, in Server 2016, that's no problem at all. We can use the file server and Hyper-V uh, on the same box. Yeah, but I still they 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 uh, are not quite sure if they say it will be supported because all presentations I saw from uh, from Klaus Jorgensen, uh, he says, uh, you have to decide if you use it as a file server, scale out file server, the storage basis direct stuff, or as a hyper converged system yeah, with hyper yeah. on it. So, but in they, this case, it's, it's a single possible. server hyper converged yeah. configuration. Yeah, with a file and server. If, yeah, with a file server. And if you look at the file server, there are a couple of shares here over here. Yeah. And these, these are used for. Uh, the location for the blob storage for the, uh, the the catalog where all the ISOs are and the images. So, uh, so there are a couple of shares which are well, as we, it's very familiar the scale out file server kind of thing. Yeah. But uh, meanwhile, we still have these cluster shared volumes. So I'll show that quickly. Uh, here's just the one volume with uh, the different shares. And these are the shares I was just showing. So this is exactly um, the, the configuration we have been using with Scalat File Service uh, all the time. Yeah. The key difference is that we didn't do uh, virtual machines on the same box. Yeah. Yeah. This was only the file server. Yeah. So the, in this this uh, proof of concept of Azure Stack, uh, we have uh, a single server with, well, as you can see, uh, uh, the VMs will be on uh, on this uh, cluster shared volumes, but also the, the gallery and all the other files, the blob storage and yeah. the table queue storage will all be there. Yeah. Now, I quickly go back to the deployment. Of course, I cannot kick off the deployment again because it, I've already yeah. done it. But um, the, the cool thing is that uh, Microsoft created a single script or a set of scripts, which you just kick off once with the right parameters. And one of the parameters here is your Active Directory uh, account. Yeah. So you need you need a subscription in Azure to actually use or try out Azure Stack. Yeah. It's important to know. Uh, this is not something we will keep. Uh, of course, maybe uh, there will be two possibilities. One will be the the scenario that you have everything everything uh, locally. In that case, we you will be able to use your own Active Directory with Active Directory Federation services. And right now we can only choose for the Active Directory uh, Active AD. Yeah, in so the, in the, the Azure, Azure, Azure Active, uh, Active Directory, Azure, right. I was yeah. looking for that word, yeah. <laughs> Azure, Azure AD. Yeah. 
So uh, in this case, you just, uh, well, there's a couple of technical things you have to know. You have to disable all network cards but one. Mm -hmm. So only one network adapter is uh, enabled. That means we don't use anything like uh, uh, the new switching switch technology or the switch embedded teaming. Uh, the, uh, those the are entity, things which yeah. will, the, yeah. the, those will be used in, in the four node uh, multi-cluster setup multi-node setup okay so you install it. it it takes maybe through two to three hours right it depends on the performance of your machine yeah and then you have a quite nice uh, host with a lot of services on it right correct correct so if if you deploy this it will uh, reboot once and as soon as you reboot you can log into as the azure stack administrator and then you get to see this what i'm showing you right now a bunch of vms yeah. I must say the number of VMs has gone up quite a bit since yesterday. Okay. Because uh, when I start, when you start with the deployment, the, the default installation gives you infrastructure as a service. Mm -hmm. So you get the virtual machines, the storage, and the networking. Um, with the additional uh, resource providers, the web apps, SQL, and MySQL, which uh, uh, were delivered yesterday, you get the platform as a service. Mm -hmm. So those three, web apps, SQL, MySQL, we call the platform as a service. And there are quite a few uh, VMs uh, added to that. And as you can see, there is just uh, a GUID. Don't we yeah. love GUIDs? Yeah, we love. You don't know what it you, is, right? You immediately <laughs> see what it is. <laughs> and I think also if you look at the cluster, you have the same problem except for the VMs, which look, the, some of them are uh, readable. Yeah. Uh, like this one. This, manager, is, right, yeah. this one is our console, uh, so I will uh, connect, uh, to it, yeah. connect to the console in a minute using this one. If you want to find out what this is, you have to go to the description below and then you see this is WW0VM. It's one of the pass uh, VMs. Mm -hmm. um, let me go CN0VM, I don't even know what it could be. Uh, this this is VM test two, which is which is just a VM provided that, by a tenant that you that you uh, provide uh, that a yeah. tenant deployed. Okay, Co correct. I I decided this will not be a podcast. It will only be a showcast because the, the people have to see that, and we will do it on the Hyper V Amigo showcast series. So, uh, but it's it, you have to see it. Uh, so we can't really describe it for for listeners. No, it's very, it's, uh, as a matter of fact, I've been trying to analyze the. The, the, the installation. Uh, so, what is involved? Uh, uh, it's it's extremely complex. Uh, yeah, it's quite it, a large. It's not one PowerShell script. It's a bunch of them, and even uh, they do something yeah. like DSC and so on, right? Yeah. Look, I've I'm currently uh, in the directory configuration, and there you have roles, and in roles you have fabric and infrastructure. Yeah. Fab infrastructure yeah. defines all the yeah. uh, the compute, the bare metal, the well, IDNS and things like that. Uh, if you go to fabric, you see all the other roles and uh, resource providers and whatever. They're all XML files and yeah. XML files and there's a very elaborate system of, of uh, PowerShell modules. Uh, it, it's it's you can it can take a week before you understand how this yeah, is all yeah. done. <laughs> so uh, I, I try I to tweak it a bit, uh, Hans. I try to tweak it a bit to get it running in virtualization, and that's not easy. So it's we have easy. now nested virtualization. We we could do all the things in a very beefy VM, and that would help for the deployment because not every uh, everyone who wants to test Azure Stack has this nice hardware you have. So running in a VM would be great, but there are some some problems there. I, I, I got it deployed once, the older version, but now I'm a little bit of uh, stuck because they change a lot. Yeah. So, so now you started the Visual Studio code and opened one of the JSON, well, the config XML. Yeah, file, right. This, this is the, 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 the cloud deployment uh, script you deploy. And uh, in the config XML, there are some important uh, settings. Yeah. Uh, like, for, like for instance, um, some of the mass the mass VMs all have the, a prefix MAS, and those those variables are defined over here. Okay. Like the domain name, etc. So if you want to tweak that, uh, this is the place to do it. Although Microsoft says don't touch it. No, I, uh, I won't do that. It, leave, 
leave it as it is and just enjoy the automatic installation wait two to three hours and yeah. uh, you get you get what, what you see here okay let's uh, let's move into um, the virtual machine the console the um, Azure pack or Azure stack console and this is in one machine it's uh, the the uh, a mass dash con zero one right you get a you get a, a machine a Windows server with all the stuff you need deployed in and also um, you have a shortcut on the desktop where you can start the Azure Stack, uh, how you call it, the Azure Stack portal. Yeah, uh, I disconnected by your machine, so it has yeah. to reconnect. Yeah, uh, where is the? It's the second icon, right? Yeah. Oh, this is the portal. I don't want a portal. I want, uh, or I am in the portal already. So this this should be good. <clears throat> oh, nice. Well, this this looks exactly the same as uh, Azure. Uh, so on the on the left you have the, the the quick start services which you can switch on and off. Like if you want to say well, I don't want to see uh, storage accounts, I just disable that by clicking on the star. Yeah. If you want to see virtual networks and network security groups, it's just a matter of adding them to your to your list. Okay. Cool. <clears throat> Uh, I'm currently logged in as the service administrator of my own Azure uh, Active Directory, uh, and I can click on the new button. Uh, if you have used Azure before, that's nothing new because it's it's exactly like Azure. Yeah, but you you said something. You are uh, you are signed in at, at the service administrator. This is a role yeah. you don't have in Azure because all the services that are provided right. by Azure are. Uh, are uh, designed by Microsoft and you can use yeah. it as as a tenant. Obviously yeah. in Azure Stack there is no Microsoft in your deployment that uh, that is setting up all the services. Uh, and you don't want that. You you if you are a service provider you want to have your own offerings, your own sizes and so on. And for that you of course need an another persona like someone who is designing all the stuff and allowing tenants to to use it. This is a service administrator, right? That's a service administrator, and uh, the service administrator has uh, privileges which uh, access the, uh, the the region management, for instance. And in the region, you have uh, scale units, and a scale unit is a cluster. Yeah. So, um, I'm looking at a single server right now, of course. But as you can say, see, you can, you have. Uh, I can access the resource providers, the RPs, yeah. and that is something uh, a tenant will never see. Yeah. So if if I log into um, the, the same bra the same portal, but as a as a tenant, did I do it right? I have to use it as in private, so so I get a different security context. Go to the portal. And I have a couple of different users defined in my Azure Active Directory. Mm -hmm. One is called uh, Tenant One. Very uh, creative name. Yes, uh, I have the same <laughs> problem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and as you can see, uh, the number of services uh, the uh, tenant can access is much limited and only shows those features and those. Uh, resources which are available to him or her. Yeah. So this is uh, actually one portal with both uh, a, a, an admin, uh, an admin portal and a, and a tenant portal. Yeah. Uh, uh, Hans, Azure, can you, can you show us the other portal and show both? Because now we we see the MSDN news flipping by uh, under the. Yeah, exactly. Please do that. So. Uh, yeah, we see a lot of more in the in the uh, in the admin uh, view, right? Correct. Let's look at compute, for instance, uh, where the virtual machines uh, are defined. And this is still a basic uh, installation, so you only get you have only one image installed in the in the in the library. Yeah. 
So Windows Server 2012 or 2, that's in, included in the deployment. Yeah. And then you can enrich yeah. it with your own images. You have images. to enrich it with uh, your own images and your own uh, items in the, in the ga yeah. gallery items. And uh, yesterday we uh, we impl implemented some additional resource providers, as I told you. Yeah. So the gallery already contains some some additional uh, things components. like the, the MySQL server I see. SQL databases, I see, and yeah, uh, oh, cool. and, and there should be web apps, app services here as well. Yeah. And you have played with okay. one or? Yeah, or let's let's just let's let's go to databases first. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um. So if I go to, I hate this one. It all always. Uh, Shrink it to the yeah yeah. I, I can't you have only the this, icons, uh, pictograms, and you don't know yeah. what it really is because they are very small. Yeah. So I have. Uh, this is the 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 SQL. Oh, this is SQL. My SQL server. Just yeah, you don't want to show my SQL, but it's great that we have my SQL there. Not only Microsoft SQL. Well, I, I tell you, you need it, you need it for some sort some of the web apps. So yeah, like of course. To, uh, WordPress. To, uh, WordPress. You need you need my SQL. So let's create a database. I've already created one. Ah, it's my coffee. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so we create a database called HVDB02. The collation is standard. We we are I have a subscription as an admin called the default provider subscription, but if I had more, I could select my subscription. Of course, yeah. I can uh, use an existing um, resource group. And for those who don't know, a resource group is simply a folder or a group where all your resources are collected. And uh, in this case, my database will be together with some other resources. In this yeah. case, it's the database being added. Well, uh, like in Azure Pack, we have the concept of a logical server. And so we create, a, we either use an existing server. Mm -hmm. That server has to be in your same resource group, by the way. So this, I cannot use this server because it's in a different resource group. Okay. I think this one is right, but let's cr create a new one. Let's just create, let's create a new resource group for this demo, RG03. And we're going to create a new database, logical database server. Uh, it's some maybe similar to an instance on a, on a physical or a virtual SQL server. Okay. Instance. So uh, it is it is an instant in a in a SQL server that is already deployed in your uh, mass yeah. environment. Okay. Correct. Yesterday I, I I couldn't create any databases because I forget to add the virtual SQL database yeah. server in you my a, environment. Yeah. You have a typo there. I think you you should uh, want to type local DB server, not SB. No. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so now you can specify the admin credentials or that you use to connect to your server. Okay. Yeah. And then the location. If you have one or more locations, and then you can choose from your location. So if you let's say you have Rotterdam and you have Utrecht, you can. Yeah. And always on or uh, this this will be available in uh, future uh, TPs or so that you can play with regions. I think in the moment you have only this one local region. Or can you add more, Hans? I'm I'm not sure if they yeah. will do that in proof of concept, but possibly yeah. yeah. In the in the production, of course, you can. Yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot to. Uh, uh, Skew. You have to choose Skew. Yeah, you like uh, you have the concept of uh, plans and offers. Yeah. You can also create uh, something for for a database uh, in terms of how much memory it can use. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure what what the minutes is. Uh, maybe compute time. I I'm, I don't really know really. I think it's compute time, and you build it by usage, maybe. Or yeah. Uh -huh. so, so you can you can differentiate between different SKUs. In this case, I take the, yeah. the standard one, select it. I can pin it to my dashboard to see uh, the progress uh, on, the, on the dashboard. And right now it's submitting uh, the deployment like you're used to in Azure. Yeah, and, and if, 
if our viewers wonder, we, we, we are not recording this at, uh, at half past two in the morning. Uh, you have to use in your uh, Azure Stack deployment the uh, Redmond time, right? Uh, uh, how it's called Pacific Standard Time. Well, this, uh, to, be, to be clear, the server is actually in, it's in Seattle, in, in uh, Bellevue. Oh, that's nice. So this, this is one of the couple of servers we can use uh, to to experiment with uh, with the new bits. Yeah, but but it's important if you deploy mass, you have you don't you should not mess with a, with a time zone. It should be at least in TP one it was that way. I don't know if it's in TP two. Yeah, it should be. I set, uh, uh, I set my server to universal time. Okay. So in in the, in the BIOS you can use your universal. Uh, Universal time or something like that. Yeah, you can see. Yeah. Then you, it just takes the, the local time. Okay, it, it works. Okay, that's yeah. new for me. Okay. So in this case, uh, let me see where we are. The deployment has uh, succeeded. Uh, this is the one which was just deployed. So that is okay now. So uh, we now have uh, a database on an, exi on an existing uh, database server. Yeah. So, do you want to show how to uh, give that to uh, to tenants, or uh, and then we can uh, consume something, or what what would you like to show? Well, I I could have shown I could have done that this as a tenant. So, um, in this case, I I uh, used uh, my own account to create a database server mm -hmm. and the database. So, as if I were a tenant. Um, so I don't know what you exactly want to want to see. Yeah, what what would you like to show? So uh, you showed us a little bit of the admin experience, uh, and there is a lot a lot to see, of course. But uh, for our viewers, uh, you design your offers, you, your yeah. services in uh, as an admin. This is what yeah. what you want the tenant to consume or to yeah. offer to the tenants, right? Yeah. Well, like, let's create a plan which uh, includes virtual machines, platform as a service, and things like that. Oh, that would be cool. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, let's let's create a new plan. I have several plans already, but we can create a new one. I assume that you are you are doing so much stuff in Azure Stack, and you just installed it yesterday, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. Well, you get handy with. Uh, <laughs> I think I've done it twenty or thirty times now. Yeah. So and right, for, let's... for our people who are watching, the service provider, they maybe don't want this. Is this UI is great? It's nice. It's like in Azure, but there are other possibilities to to do stuff there. Yeah. You don't have to click everything. There, you can use other things. Uh, right. Uh, PowerShell. PowerShell. We can use PowerShell, Visual Studio, uh, yeah. CLI. Yeah. So, so you, even if you if you're if you're on a Mac, uh, you can just unbelievable use the command line, <laughs> and who knows, PowerShell will will end up on uh, on, on Apple as well. <laughs> I uh, think so. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. yeah. So, so show us the plan, please. Yeah, let's go make a plan. And make let's a plan. Uh, make a, a demo plan. Demo plan. That's always good. Uh, I already have a resource group for plans and, and offers, so let's use that one. Office and plans, it's called. Okay. Uh, now I decide which services are within this plan. Uh, I'd like to see compute. That's like infrastructure uh, as a service, right? Well, network. That's not too. Network is minimum and storage. This is minimum for infrastructure as a service, yeah. but I also want to include web and SQL. Maybe, cool. Okay, let's, let's be fair and do my SQL as well. <laughs> The, the next thing you have to choose is uh, what, how much resources a tenant may use. Okay. So I've already created a couple of quotas. Quota is, uh, I can show you what is in the quota. Probably says how many databases you can create. Yeah. So this is important as an, an, an if you are an enterprise, you don't want that users can consume one user can consume all your compute and storage. Uh, at a hoster, it doesn't maybe really matter because you get money for it, and you want to sell as much as you can. But if I'm an enterprise, I maybe want uh, want to give my users self service, but but want to limit how much they can do in a self service, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this is why the quotas are there. 
currently I, I will select uh, the, the existing quotas I've created. For yeah. the last one I will define a new one. Okay. So you can see something of how to do this. I don't think that all the quotas or quotas are uh, actually uh, working yet. Uh, working, so it doesn't really matter what you do. Yeah. Quote uh, C two, and then you can see what the settings are underneath. Like fifty virtual machines, one fifty gig, and a hundred uh, cores. Okay, I'm fine with that's, that. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah, you need some beefy servers. So yeah. You, if you only have an Azure Stack of four servers, it's only a minimum. Yeah. And you know why the the minimum of four, of course, as as you are the uh, storage spaces. Uh, storage spaces directly. Direct. Needs. Yeah, uh, so you wanted to have a four-node server, and you have to uh, the 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 arm arm has to, to be run there. The portal, all the all the resource providers. So you need some hosts for that uh, to offer something to 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 customers, right? So this one host deployment is only for development and testing. Yeah, and as I understand, it will be there even when uh, Azure Stack is GA. There there will be a one one uh, machine solution yeah, for, testing. For, for testing and development. Yeah. So you don't Correct. have to buy an integrated system with four servers, two switches. No, this is for production. Be, yeah, A four node system would be quite a lot of money, I think. Yeah. So, yeah. so a one node is nice to, 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 to test out. With, yeah. yeah. Um, well, now that we've created uh, a plan, uh, this plan is called demo plan one. Now we want to package that into uh, an offer. Yeah. One offer can have more than one plan. Okay. So we have one offer, multiple plans. Okay. And each plan has one or more services. And so we put all almost all services in the in the demo plan. The next step is to create an offer. And that offer is not created yet. So I create a demo offer. I'll use the, the same group again. Officer plans. Base plans, you have to choose at least one plan, right? Mm, where is it? The demo first plan? one, the demo plan, yeah. As you can see, I can select more. Yeah, that's cool. And then you have the so-called add-on plan. So if you if a, if a tenant has already a base plan, you can add additional cores or additional databases in an, in an add-on plan. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do that. No, I'm not no because uh, we have, I think uh, you have a time constraint in, in, in 15 minutes. So it would be nice to create a plan and then show how a tenant can. Yeah. Okay, we have to wait till the offer has been created. Uh, meanwhile, I'll check if the tenant is working. Or sorry, the tenant portal is working. Or what do you want to check? No, the, te the, the tenant portal was already. Uh, I think where is it? No, not this one. Here, because I I'm going to get a, a new subscription. Yeah. Uh, as soon as the uh, the. The offer is ready. So I have to refresh. It, yeah, it's it's now it's now ready. So the offer is available. But uh, you have to think about one thing: whether you actually uh, sign up the tenants yourself, or that the tenant can sign up himself. Yeah. Uh, by default, the offer is private, so it cannot be seen by uh, by the tenants. So in, the, in this case, I change it to public. Yeah. yeah. I'm changing it to public, uh, I'm able to see it. So uh, the public uh, offerings, a tenant can self-subscribe and uh, a private you have to assign yeah. as an administrator. That cool. would be the okay. concept. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, let's, well, let's just create another subscription. And here we choose the offer. And the demo offer should be visible. It is. Yeah, there it is. Great. And right now, I should be able to deploy, well, let's say, 
uh, a web app. Uh, web app. So you're now consuming an, um, something out of the offer, and we 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 put it IIS in it, infrastructure as a service, web apps, and MySQL and SQL. So you now can use that, right? Correct. It says something like this. Yeah, you have to use a more complex name, right? App name. Uh, it doesn't work. Maybe you sh you don't choose a web app. Maybe we choose. Uh, let's let's. We are hyper VM VPs. Let's choose a VM. All what right. I've, I've just created a website yesterday, so yeah, maybe, it, it's very new and uh, maybe it uh, it has to do some work in the background first before we can yeah. uh, actually consume the website. Sometimes yeah, you have to refresh or sometimes yeah. even to restart a portal. It's yeah. still beta software. Yeah. So now you you choose the uh, a template a Windows Server 2012 R2. This is in the, the the it's a it's a uh, example template that is included in the mass uh, the must setup and you can add more we talked about that already yeah. so you're consuming it now yeah this is this is just the base the the one the one image you was we were seeing earlier yeah. um, it's very nice to be able to add your own services on yeah. custom images and there will be a very cool feature in the near future or hopefully in the next uh, technical, technical preview, preview. yeah um, where we can uh, what we call syndicate with Azure. Uh, that means you can you can go to the, the to the marketplace of Azure, and if that service is available for syndication, you can actually export it and import it into your Azure stack. Yeah. So it's very easy to uh, add uh, additional content to your own. Uh, yeah. You don't, you don't have to do the work yourself. Uh, the work is already done in Azure and you can, for example, say I want this Windows 2016 with SQL in it or so and it will be downloaded to your Azure stack. I understand it that way. And then you can can offer it to your customers, right? That's very cool. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So now you specify the admin user and the password because this is a tenant machine and the tenant can, of course, specify his own credentials to use it. Correct. You use long passwords. I will. Well, th okay. there's a minimum of, minimum of twelve. Okay, twelve is okay, but this is yeah. more than twelve. <laughs> you have to be able to remember it. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. If you forget it, you 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 can't use the machine, right? I'll create so. a, a new. Well, I don't have any resource groups yet. Maybe that was the problem earlier. For yeah, the web you, app. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't think I could specify a, a group or something. Um, resource group uh, one, location is local. And right now it's uh, continuing to ask for the size. There is a, a limited amount of sizes, not as many as in Azure. Uh, that will be expanded, I suppose. But right now we can choose some yeah, decent sizes. Yeah, but remember, Azure Stack is Azure, so we have the same sizes than in Azure, right? That's important. No, I don't think so, because some of the sizes are very dependent on, uh, on particular hardware in Azure. Yeah. But the, ma the majority will be, yeah. Yeah. The majority will be. And you don't get all of them, for example. You don't get the the new N machines where you have a lot of GPUs and so in it. Yeah. You have to have the hardware for that, of course. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Well, if you can look at the definition of the settings of the VM, you have the storage account uh, because you can only place the VM VHD on blob storage if you yeah. have a storage account. In this yeah. case, it just proposes a, a random number. Yeah, a new um, one, yeah. You can also create your storage account in advance and then use it and give it a nice name. Uh, the same applies to the net, the virtual network, the subnet. Yeah, so you can create your own namespace. In this case, it's just a default. Uh, it automatically creates a public IP, so you can reach it from uh, outside. Yeah. Uh, a security group. Uh, these are features uh, provided by the network controller, uh, uh, like firewall. Uh, Mm -hmm. capabilities. Uh, then we have a number of extensions like in Azure. Um, you can add extensions. 
uh, this case there are a number like the, the, the desired state com uh, configuration for uh, configuring uh, the VM within the VM mm -hmm. uh, anti malware and script execution. I'll just leave it at that now. Um, high availability, availability set. So if you want to create a, a, a load balanced uh, VM set or you want to spread them across nodes, well, a single node is not all that uh, important. Yeah. Uh, so we, we say OK and off it goes. Yeah, and then it will deploy and uh, we have some minutes left. So maybe, uh, Hans, you can give us a quick glance on an ARM template. We, we talked about ARM be, uh, before we started the demo. Uh, do you can show us something in ARM, a quick template or so? Do you have one? Um, not on this server, but I can show you if you create a new one. Yeah, how, how it would like, uh, how it would look like. Yeah, because now we you you using the portal to set up all the stuff and it's uh, it's nice and you can specify a lot of options but you have to click through everything. Yeah. Oh, wait, I sorry, I have to have to create a custom image. You have to create a custom image, okay? I forgot where it was. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's over here somewhere. Custom. Yeah, I, I I played with templates. It's it's not so easy to find. I had I had the same problems. Now there is a very nice website. Let's let's go to that one. So uh, Azure Stack. Um, ARM templates. Yeah, we can show one of those. Quick start templates on GitHub. And uh, to mention, a friend of us is working a little bit there, right? Mark, doing, Mark, Mark is uh, doing uh, working with the templates and make them pretty, I would say. Uh, yeah, he also checks them, he, he checks them for uh, consistency with uh, Azure, Azure Stack. So if you take an Azure template, of course, it has some uh, things like uh, West Europe and North Europe, yeah. and that is not something that can be used uh, in Azure Stack. You have to change it to your uh, to the own location. Yeah. Uh, let's take um, simple VM. It's the most popular one. Yeah. If I open the Azure deploy, here you, you can only see only to, to look at it. Uh, we don't have to deploy it. Uh, uh, you would have to change the region and so on, and that's for the the last minutes we have. It's too much, and uh, yeah, yeah. But only that we well, can see what is an ARM template. This is the language yeah. the Azure Resource Manager, I would say, understands, right? The JSON. Correct. They, this is the JSON, uh, the JavaScript object notation. Yeah, it's like an XML is, file, right? Something it defines like it defines your service. It can. Mm -hmm. It can be only one VM, it can be a set of VMs, it can be uh, an application plus a VM. Uh, the, and the cool thing is that you can deploy it once, twice, three times as much as you can. And each, each, time, each time you change something in your template, it will actually modify that in your yeah. production. So, you can, so uh, you, you can update a template, for example, if you have a complex one, like a service that is multiple machines, uh, databases, a middle tier application, front end servers, and you need more front end servers, for example, because you get more load on the system. You can add some front end servers in the templates, increase the number, and redeploy it, and it will add these front end servers and not redeploy everything. Yes. Yeah? That's the yes, important exactly. part, right? Yeah. yeah. That's, that's okay. very nice. Yeah. So, uh, what what is our virtual machine doing? Is it already there, or, or had we an error? It was the tenant, right? Let's see. I didn't click on OK yet. Ah, OK. Head hasn't kicked off yet. Yeah, but you've done it several times. Uh, it will work. Uh, of course, it takes it takes a little bit longer than we used to uh, in if you just deploy it from uh, from Hyper-V or VMM. A lot of more, a lot of more checks uh, are made before it yeah. is actually deployed, but 
it's working uh, quite decently. Yeah. So uh, to let's wrap up what what we showed and what we talked about. Uh, um, um, the, the amazing thing is you really get Azure. You have the same portal, and the only it's difference exactly the is, same. yeah, is maybe the number of possible resources you have in the, in your deployment in the moment. Uh, Azure has more, but when you look at the portal, uh, only up in the left you see Microsoft Azure Stack. And if you are in Azure, there is Microsoft Azure, right? Uh, have you had you had the problem that you don't know in which portal you are? It is possible, or yeah, it's it's easy to mistake. Uh, yeah. Although a template uh, deployment will not work if you have the wrong location, so that's yeah. the first thing you will notice. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, and of course, you recognize your own stuff, so. After a while, you know, oh, yeah, this is the, my local Azure. In Azure, I would have to think, uh, is, is it, how, where's my, how, is my budget finished already? Can I still yeah, deploy yeah, services? Yeah. And here I can just, just deploy as many as I want. Yeah, yeah uh, so uh, Hans, you are blogging a lot about this stuff or uh, uh, re um, collecting resources. Where can we find your work about Azure Stack? Well, I, I first point you to, uh, to uh, the blog uh, Mark uh, Schollmann started yeah is the Azure Azure Stack Stack, EU. Uh, EU. yeah and you know my blog of course which is hyperv.new sometimes we I, we cross post uh, i post it to hyperv.new and yeah. then to uh, Azure Stack. i did a couple of uh, uh, you are in private maybe oh there it is well this there is uh, uh, this is already discussing the, the november update with yeah the, uh, at the azure uh, pass uh, Extend uh, services. <clears throat> if you go to hyperv.new and you, you 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 just search for Azure Stack, you'll be able to find a couple of uh, blogs on uh, on Azure Stack. Um, and you are also doing a, a OneNote thing, right? Of course, yeah. I almost forget that. Oh, yeah, uh, a, a great resource collection for all the stuff uh, you come across, and you come across a lot, right? Yeah, um, let me go to Azure Stack. Where is it? Uh, below, Azure. below. Oh, no, Wiki. There it is. Azure Stack Wiki. This was the one, the Azure Pack. Well, it, it's it's more like this one. It, this is the Azure Pack Wiki, but it's it's the same same idea. Yeah. Uh, I have a number of topics. I started uh, on the on the Microsoft Wiki, but the Wiki couldn't hold my content yeah, anymore. Much, so right? I <laughs> so I decided to pro provide a link to uh, yeah. to the Azure Stack uh, to the to the uh, OneNote. Yeah, and, and here you here you see it. The yeah, and there you see also your Twitter handle. So it's H H Vredevoort. H, correct. Where do you see it? Over there, there. Yeah. yeah, there, yeah. and uh, you can follow Hans on Twitter. He is tweeting a lot about Azure Stack lately. So if you are interested in the topic, go there. Hans, this was a very nice, I would call it now, showcast because we showed a lot of stuff and uh, what, what was really nice. And to remember, if not everything works at once, you have a new code that is only available. Uh, it was only published yesterday and we are at TP2. So we will get a TP3. Microsoft already announced Actually. that. And uh, the product will be GA sometimes in the middle of next year. So Microsoft has still some months of uh, work. Uh, features will come into Azure Stack and bug fixing, of course. And But it, it looks really nice already. So I like it a lot. And yeah. I know you like it even more than I do, right? <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, most most of our job is around Azure Stack nowadays. So, yeah, yeah, that's why I like it a lot. Yeah, and uh, it's 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 a nice thing. And uh, in 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 our in our profession, the the things are changing all the time. And uh, I'm I'm getting maybe too old for that. And I'm, I'm admire you because you have you are some years ahead. And uh, yes, still and doing I'm st the I'm still, I still stuff. need to adjust and change. And of course, life is about change, but. Yeah, uh, I, I, it would be very boring if uh, I was still at, uh, let's say, Server 2012. 
uh, or even Wolfpack or something like that. <laughs> okay, Hans, it was a pleasure. Thank you very much. And uh, I see you next Tuesday at uh, Expert Live. I'm looking yeah. forward to that. See you there. Okay, thank you, Carsten.